Good evening. I'd like to call the Special Services Committee meeting to order on October 19th, 2023 at 7.14 p.m. First item on our agenda is the approval of the September 21st, 2023 Special Services Minutes. Motion. Second. There being a motion and a second, is there any discussion or comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item two is enrollment update. Dr. Brain. I uh, don't have a lot of words to say about it, but you do have the enrollment. Oh, you should have received it in your packet, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. I don't think there were too many changes from last month. Any questions, comments? Mr. Downs? I'm on enrollment. I don't know if I'm following this or not, but targeting and capturing. Would that fall under probably enrollment? Possibly because we're talking about kids in the schools. So I just got a couple questions on that. I can, sure. I've, so um, are there consequences when kids are targeting to schools? Just curious. I might be looking to you, Justin, for a second. So there should be, we, we have a, an attendance policy. Yeah. Um, no, I know the attendance pretty policy. pretty focused on absences. Yeah. So um, I didn't hear the question. Do you mind if I yeah, go ahead. call up to it? They're asking about um, consequences for students who are tardy. Yeah, the, so uh, we like the teachers contacting the parents first as the first line of um, contact. And then it gets referred to the administration. And then there's graduated sanctions. So it starts with a warning, then we call the parents, then it goes to, um, I think it's an in-school, and then it finally gets to an out-of-school if it's chronic all the time. No, but we don't necessarily like getting to that point because they're not in school. <coughs> That's why they're tardy, so we don't like to send them back out again. Before. And I probably should have said this first. I'm happy to get information from all the schools just so you have more. Well, uh, I was going to get to that. Okay. Um, what about like at the elementary level? Right. Because unfortunately, at the elementary yeah. level, it's up to the parents a lot of times to get the kids yeah. in school and get them on the bus. So just, yeah, it's able to, sure. in the packing. Monthly, I would love to see the absences and throughout the district and tidiness throughout the district. But that's something we can start seeing. We used to have an attendance, um, a monthly attendance update for okay. each school. Okay. We used to have a report. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Next item is our bus data, which is also included in our backup. Any updates for the bus routes? No, we made that one change last month. Yeah. We haven't had any, um, any issues this month. Okay. Any questions or comments about busing? All right, next item on the agenda is our special education <laughs> update. I'd like to welcome Mrs. Kamis. Uh, yeah, that's, oh, it's yeah. Camus. Camus. Yeah, yeah. Camus. Yeah. Thank you. No, no problem. So, hey, everybody. Thanks so much for having me tonight. Um, so we sent out this snapshot already. Um, so we'll hope you had a chance to take a look at a few different areas, but I'll touch on the highlights of it. Um, so there's currently 961 um, students that are being serviced through our district for special education. Um, that is an increase um, from the start of last school year, but uh, just a little bit more than what we saw at the um, March report that had come out. Um, we are seeing um, more in Wakefield students that are here at our high school, um, so it is a little bit more there. Um, and then also um, students attending CN Academy, we do have more students there also. Um, and then down below, I talked about um, the out of district um, numbers, which is a lot higher than what we were looking at last year. One thing that I had done was I pulled um, our students that are attending charter schools into that number just so then that way we could look at that part of it because that is a pretty big thing right now and we have um, students attending two of our two charter schools in the area so yeah. oh, sorry. <coughs> so if you pulled out the charter kid school yeah. would the number be similar to what it was last year yeah it okay. would be yeah it's pretty close together um, so with students attending Rochester Learning Academy and also um, the charter schools it is pretty comparison to what it was last year okay so, yeah Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then I just broke down into more detail about <coughs> students that are core placed, um, JPO involved, um, students that are in DCYF. Um, one thing that I am going to be looking to do for my next update with you guys is looking to see about um, BCBH. 
uh, and just having that information too um, for everybody. So we follow with that. Um, and then that's down below it has the charter schools. So it's um, more than 10 students attending charter schools. Um, and then I did just put that part of it in there because we did have some students that moved into district that were already in at a district placement. Um, so we did the same thing like we did last year with um, having the meetings when they first come to our district to determine if they can be serviced here in our schools uh, versus staying in the charters, I mean, sorry, in the out of district schools. So, um, and then any questions there? Um, and then I went into additional information for public charter schools, um, just because with the, um, the rules that are going through right now, we did have the MOUs that were assigned between the district and the two charter schools. Um, which is really great. So the two, um, we all worked really together for that, which was really nice for our students. Um, and then down below um, was just an update from the remote service letter that I know that there were some concerns that were brought up during the last meeting. So, um, and I don't know if you guys have had a chance to look through this. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and again, I, I know that you're new, so yeah. I, I apologize because with special education, I get very heated. Um, so. Did you look at the letter from last year? Okay. From the last school year, so not this school. Yeah. Correct. Yes. So yeah. I have one, but I can't share it because there's a parent signature on it. Okay. So I was going to share it, but the parent asked me not to, but I wanted the letter from last year. Yeah. Um, my issue is, and it was brought up, we had a DOE meeting, and it was brought up to somebody at the DOE, and they yeah. did not like the letter that was sent out because it, it's an IEP. So your IEP, if you're getting one-on-one -on -one services, you can't technically send out a letter that says, this is what we're going to give you for blanket services. So yeah. I just wanted to address something that was stated last year. Sure. So it pretty much kind of said everything that the letter said, but then it said, it, I'm going to take my glasses off because I can't read. So it said, please select your option below. Sign and return this for your student's case manager. Option one, you consent to your child participating in the online group special education instruction and activities and further agree that no one in your household will record or photograph the session. So basically kind of what you already sent out. Yeah. Option two, you do not agree to your child's participating in the online special education instruction activities. The district will contact you to schedule an IEP team meeting. No remote services will be provided until the IEP team meeting is conducted, which basically then means you would get compensatory services like after you have the IEP meeting, yeah. you, like those services could be over the summer. What, you know what I mean? Like that IEP team would then make that decision, which yeah. it should be because yeah. unfortunately it should be an IEP. That's why they're getting services as a team. And then it says, if you do not respond, the school district will reluctantly assume you prefer option two um, and an IEP team meeting will be scheduled. Yeah. I think that's the portion that I feel we're meeting, we're missing. Okay. Any. IEP services and anything that's in that IEP is made by a team decision yeah. to send out a letter That's not an IEP team decision that basically says your services that are a federal legal binding contract are going to be changed To everybody is not following the legal the, the guidelines yeah. So so they think for that part of it that and I think and I can see now afterwards yes. the misunderstanding for that part of it. So the idea was never to have services that are individual go to group services or anything along those lines. It was more so for the families that have students that have the group services for them to know that number one, it's going to be um, in a group setting so there's other people that are there to make sure that we're protecting the confidentiality for our students. Um, it was never meant to say that they were going from individual to group services um, during that time. So I'm hoping that my letter that I send out to you guys clears that part of it up. Um, I would ask that we put those two options okay. in yeah. because a parent can then check off yeah. and then you have that yeah. contract that says, yes, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So no, I want a team meeting. Yeah. And I think when you have special ed parents, we're ready to fight at every single step. Like as soon as we hear the word no, even if it's like, something stupid, we're ready, yeah. right? So I think when you take that option away from a parent that had it the previous year, yeah. it, it's going to incite some kind of yeah. fight or flight type of thing. So I've been really open throughout the whole time that yeah. I've been a coordinator in our district beforehand that I enjoy having families that are contacting me and asking and, and advocating for their children because I would much rather have that discussion with a parent and be able to talk about that part of it than for them not to either come to me or not to say anything to the school district and us just keep going through. Because um, we are all on the same page. We are here for the students and what's going to be doing the best for them 
Um, so yes, I mean, that's something that we can definitely do and look back into adding back into the blood. And, and I appreciate yeah. all that you're saying and I do understand that you're new. So yeah. I understand that you're coming into something that really wasn't, you know what I mean? You're, you're kind of just trying to clean up or, or look at things. So please know that it's not meant as a disrespect. I've heard wonderful things about you. Um, but I think having that option from what I spoke with parents, that's what, because if they yeah. want to set up an IEP meeting, yeah. all they have to do is check this off and yeah. then the team sets up the meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that option, I think, yeah. giving parents that choice to say, what is it that you want yeah. without, because if you don't sign it, you're choosing to have a meeting, yeah. which I think is really important when you have a special ed student. Because Completely. Yeah, if you're having a group meeting and there's some kids that are non-special ed, that normally doesn't happen when you're having like a group meeting, which I, by the way, I think is amazing. I think it's great to have non-special ed kids in that group setting because yeah. kids learn from learn. Like, but I think for me, having that option, that's what parents were upset yeah. with, that they yeah. didn't have the option to set up that team meeting and yeah. they felt like their their choices were being taken away. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't sound like that was your goal. No, it was never the intention. But that's that kind of seen yeah. out. So we yeah. could resend, I know yeah. some people have signed it or whatever, yeah. but you know, yeah. some way that. It. And that was the other part for this part of it was really to come up with something else to communicate with families because I want them to also know who I am because I'm another Sarah kind of thing, but I have been in the district for a while. I was a special ed teacher here in the district. I was a special ed coordinator at the middle school for the past seven years. Um, so I have that experience side of it, and I really do love working with Rochester community and our families. Um, and I think the other part is that in the past, when I was at the middle school, we always had that date that if parents didn't send it in, we would always have that meeting just to talk about it because we want to be proactive with that instead of being reactive. Um, we want to see what's going to be working best for our students. Yes, so. and I don't mind. I just didn't get a chance to cross off the yeah. names, but if you need a copy of this, I'd be more than happy. Yeah, I have it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make yes. sure. Yeah, no, I do. Didn't Thank want to you. didn't want to make you add more yes. work. Have to listen no. to write it in. Yeah, so. no, I appreciate it. Thank and you. I, and I do appreciate this kind of input as well because I want to be doing what's best for our community and what's best for our students. Um, and I appreciate it. So. No, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Downs. Uh, what's the criteria for when we put someone out of, uh, out of district? Um, so there's a lot that go into it. Um, when we're thinking about an out of district placement, it's a very restrictive environment um, where we're um, thinking about special ed as a continuum. So we're starting with the least restrictive services and setting, and then we're working that way up from there. Um, so really, we'd be looking at lots of different um, um, services, um, bringing the CPAs into different conversations. We're having lots of meetings with parents, um, with the team, to, and talking about that part of it. Um, is that? An, it breaks down to an yeah. IEP team decision. Yes. So the team needs collaborates, has a yeah. conversation, and just okay. agrees on what's the best interest of the yeah. child. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then the charter schools, that is something that parents choose for the children to go to. That's nothing that um, we really have to say in for that part. So, but we do work really collaboratively with our charter schools. Um, like SECO Charter School, we've been working collaboratively with for the past now eight years. So, so to that point, I guess I'm not sure. Do we supply services? Do we do, we do services to a student at like Seton Academy or? Um, charter school. So it's a two different parts of it. So Seen Academy falls under the private school side of it. So there is certain uh, percentage of the money through our IDA grant that we then have to give to basically Seen Academy for the service that is for the student. Well, for the students who qualify for special ed. Um, so it's not necessarily services, but it's different supports. So things that we do is um, looking into giving uh, mind play access for them, like programs, um, go, doing that part of it. But we also do it through a team process. So we have meetings with um, Seen Academy, with parents, um, and we would treat that as if there's a referral that comes from Seen Academy, we still go through and we do the evaluation process with them. Um, so we do all of that, and that's outside of all the IDA grant side of it. And then the charter schools is so, different? Yeah, charter schools um, is different. Um, so what that is um, really depends on the charter school and what it is. So what the way that we have it right now um, is that we have um, the services are typically done by the charter schools um, who then bill us for those services that they're providing. Um, and then, but if there's a time that they cannot do the services, that's when the IEP team comes together and we basically say, Rochester's going to be doing this service, um, Seacoast Charter School or whatever the charter school will be doing these services. 
Um, so it really is on an individual basis Including for the students. Evaluations. Um, evaluations. We do all of those ones. Okay. Yeah. So we we do that part of it because we're still the LEA. Yeah. So we want to um, make sure that we have the information and we have the data and our evaluators who are very wonderful and really okay. thorough with everything. So, Thank you. but again, we're working with the charter schools. Um, they're part of the meetings. They're part of our plan for spectators with disability. Um, they're they're we're together as a big team. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So we were talking about staffing at the last meeting, and is is the secretary of special education is she part time? We uh, where do you have a secretary for the high school? Oh, the high school. Yes, I am not sure of her hours. I did hear today that she may be um, less than. I don't think she, she's not full time and full year. Okay. But I'm not sure of her hours. I know it's been discussed in the past yeah. that it was going, like we were hoping to be a full-time student, because she yeah. does a lot. She, she does. With she does. A lot of IEPs yes. and a lot of families and everything. Yeah. And I'm just saying if we were discussing the other option, it's been brought up in the past. So having a full-time yeah. secretary, is that something that you would think is needed? Um, it's something that I can look at the numbers for everything and look at the, see the, all the information um, to see that, if that is something that's needed. But I would imagine with the level of support that they do have at the high school, um, that that is something that we can look into. Can you, yeah, can you just yeah. look at it and get back to yes. it? Yes, definitely. And Mr. So I just get a couple of questions about behavior um, yeah. and accountability and the discipline and how we go about it. Yeah. So I guess I'll just throw a scenario at you. Let's say you have a child in the elementary school that's out of control. This running through the halls, just flying. What can staff do to stop it? Yeah. So are we, and I'm going to ask a bunch so of questions. Can you, so can you, I know there's, a, there's laws in place. Can yeah. you just uh, explain that and then go into how staff should be handled? So are we talking about an identified student or are we talking about a non-identified student? Either one. So it might well, be a little let's, bit. Let's go over both. Okay. Um, so if it's a non-identified student, um, I think that would love it. It gets to the child's final obligations. So once we're having a student that may be um, rolling over the floor, may be really disruptive, may be doing really destructive things, then I think we get into a child's final part where we wanted them to do a referral for special ed. Um, and then that process would lead us to going through a comprehensive evaluation, which our district has been doing for the last three years. Uh, we do, uh, we've always done really great evaluations, but we've been really focusing on comprehensive ones, um, making sure we're doing cognitive, making sure we're really looking at um, communication when we're looking at behavior, because we want to make sure that that behavior is just not them not being able to communicate themselves. Um, so we would um, do that part of it we could enlist the, the help of a board certified behavior analyst. Um, so right now we're working with two companies in our district. Um, so William J. White, um, who has been here for the past 14 years working with us, and also Constellations um, for the last two years. Um, so we work along those sides of it. Um, we could look into creating a um, temporary, like not temporary, but like that informal intervention plan that was really put in, in the law last year, we would put something like that in place, but that would be building administration, doing that with our school counselors, um, possibly our special ed. Like it really would be everybody at that point. Um, and then again, it's lots of meetings with parents because all, all behavior is a form of communication. So we're really trying to figure out what they are communicating to us and what we need to do to help that child. So what are we doing in the instant that this is going on? That they're flying through the hallways, running around, and then at a point where the admin have to call for a secure campus? So I think it will depend for a few different parts of it. So when we're thinking about that side of it, we're getting into some of our seclusion and restraint laws that were updated in the summertime. So that part of it really brings in um, that if we're doing a seclusion or we're doing any of that, we're bringing in additional personnel. Um, so and there's a lot of thresholds for that part of it, meaning that it's someone that um, one, the student may want to have in that space is not just a random person from the, not the street, but like somewhere in the, in the school. Um, it is someone that they really prefer to have to, working with them. Um, we would um, be working with the students that way. There's lots of different tools. We are um, doing CPI in our district. We're really working on more of the um, proactive side of it. So we're really trying to do the de-escalation before it gets to any kind of the physical restraints or anything like that which it sounds like even from what you're saying is it rises into a level that would need that by any means. Um, now, when we get called into, when the school, let's say we, they call a secure campus, yeah. is 
every parent in that district notified, letting them, uh, letting them know that there's a secure campus due to an incident? Um, in my history, yes, that has been the case part of it. They would get a notification from the building principal letting them know that they had gone to a secure campus. Um, they wouldn't be giving individual information no, about the student or anything like that, but they would be notified of that. Um, and it's usually, in my in experience, it's a really timely manner um, of a response for parents to know that, and it goes through thrill share. So it is um, email, phone calls, text messages, and all that. So can staff grab a hold of a student that is causing this kind of ruckus during the school? Like, physically grab them? Like, grab them by the arm to keep them from running? No, no, it's no. Okay. I think they're safe now. Yeah. Only if it's affecting their safety. In, in, even that part of it, we would really, um, be, we're not like grabbing the student side of it. We would have, so if anyone's doing hands on, they would have to be a CPI certified um, staff member. And we do have nine um, instructors in our district, including me, um, where we do go and teach our staff um, those different parts of it. And really, a lot of it is that kids, and thinking about elementary school, going back to that, their, their joints, everything is just so, in, but it's so delicate it's so uh, so you have to be really careful with that side of it so again we're going to those proactive parts of it so we're having um we were very well staffed much better staffed with para support this year than we were in the past um so we and we have also have some more of our um advanced um, rbt's so registered behavior technicians that are working in our district uh, we have about 14 of them this year which is really great um so they're really being able to support our students no, um, sorry uh, now accountability what are we doing with this? Are we suspending this kid? Or are we just going to calm him down, bring him back to, back to class? Because okay. I'm big on accountability. Yeah. Yeah, they need to be held accountable. Yeah. And it all starts at home. I think the parents need to be held accountable. Yeah. Because sometimes you need to inconvenience them by yeah. sending them home. Yeah. And I think it will all depend on certain parts of it. So we'll talk about the student's disability side of it. It will talk about their uh, past behaviors um, and all of that. If you're getting into a part where a, a student is physical with a staff member with other students, and that's a really different area, and we are talking more about looking at um, more support or more a possible suspension or something along those lines at that point. Um, but really what we're doing is looking at what that student is doing. So a lot of times in my world, a lot of, in special ed side of it, there is a lot of <coughs> communication that's coming from those behaviors. So we're doing functional behavioral assessments, trying to figure out what is that root cause and what's causing those behaviors. So then that way we can um, change those behaviors around to be more appropriate for the school setting. Uh, and a lot of that is also parent side of it. So we have, sometimes we have some students who have um, parent consult where they're also meeting with our, our board certified behavior analysts to look at what they're doing at home um, to support the children there because they're not two different children in, in different environments, it's the same child. So we want them to have that continuity between everything. So the best of their ability. Yeah, one more question. Yeah. Talking about when uh, students hit staff, incident reports are documented, yeah. correct? Yeah. Now is this something where you could start bringing that to the board as well so we're aware of how many incidents I know we can't have names, but at least we're aware of what's going on with uh, with that with this each month. Right. Thank you. I just think it's important to say when you're looking at behaviors, there's two kinds. There's one where it could be a manifestation of your disability, at which point if you're yelling in the middle of the class because you have a disability like Tourette's, you can't really hold a child accountable. So then you would look at your behavior plan or your or your team or your IEP because you can't legally hold a child accountable if it's something that they can't control. But if you're looking at somebody who's a typical student, and feel free to correct me, but if that student is having a complete meltdown, I think what you're saying is there may be an evaluation that needs to take place yeah. to find out if there's a child find and that yeah. child has a disability to at which point we can kind of address the behavior. But there are policies and procedures in place if you're like a typical child and there's no disability that's, you know, that's been labeled and there's policies and procedures that say this is what happens if you are disruptive, act inappropriately, misbehave. So I think it's kind of two different paths that you yes. have to go down because again, if it's a manifestation of their disability, there's not a lot you can do besides provide supports in, in the form of paras or whatever other supports because you can't really hold somebody accountable for something that they can't control. And our district has done a really nice job in yes. the past few years of really expanding out those services um, because like I mentioned before, we have really like one DCBA in our district for a very long time and now we have um, just under 10 of them in our district um, supporting our schools and supporting our staff, our students, everything. So it's wonderful. Yeah. 
I agree exactly with what Ms. Stokes said. I just want to make sure with if they don't have an IEP or if there is nothing in place and they're having this, there's accountability where they, because we have other kids, that, students in this, they, they, they're there to learn, they want to learn. And they're being disrupted whether the class is being evacuated or going, they, they, they can't concentrate. I just want to make sure those students, there's accountability to hold the parents accountable. That's just what I want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for the special ed update? I, I just want to thank you. You're added value when you're when you're here, and I think it's it's nice to be able to have those conversations. So when you weren't here last month, I know. just do you know what I mean? Yes. So I want to thank you for being yeah. here, and I just want you to know that I, I do my value. And I'm being here for the rest of them for the whole school year. Um, last year I did have a um, emergency that happened in the household that was something that I knew beforehand, <coughs> but it was something that week that was making it really difficult for me to be here. So I do apologize for that side of it. Um, it but. happens all the time. Yeah. Like, but I just wanted you to know there's a reason why we want you here, and it's yeah. because you do add value. Yeah. So thank you. thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, next item on our agenda is UNE Online Education Program. So we um, have a really exciting opportunity to partner with UNE. Um, they've offered, I, sent, I think you have the contract and also just a sample flyer with information about um, offering our staff um, graduate courses at a discounted rate, 25%. Um, the first course, or, or at least one course, would be offered here um, at, in our district on site um, with one of our administrators as the uh, professor, um, which is uh, wonderful. And, um, but even beyond that, all of the courses in the program would be offered at a discounted rate. Um, I did have our um, board attorney just take a look at the, um, the contract to make sure I hadn't missed anything, and he said it looked great, um, but this would need your approval if we wanted to move forward with it. Um, if we do, they're uh, prepared to come and do some uh, open houses for our staff, I think in November, um, so that staff who are interested can learn a little bit more about uh, the opportunity. This is a wonderful opportunity for our staff. This is exciting. Great, Mr. Pappas. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think we had some kind of a relationship with UNE in the past. Um, or is it in my thinking of a different college? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. SNHU in oh, the okay. past. Okay. Yeah. If I may, I'll go ahead and. Technically, this employee benefit doesn't this belong to personnel. Education special services. I thought it was care of <coughs> but I thought it was what we did students, not the. Like, we do professional. I just want to make sure it's the right. Professional development falls under special services. Okay. Well. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Mr. Pappas. Will we accept the agreement with um, University of Maryland? Okay. All right. Any discussion? Just want to point out, I did like in the contract that we do have the ability to terminate at any time with cause, 90 day notice. That's just a good writing in there, just in case. Mm -hmm. But it looks like it's perfect. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the UNE um, program, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <laughs> carries. Thank you. All right, and then a uh, five-year plan. I don't think we have any plans. No, you guys are waiting on it. GIS was the next thing to discuss. Yeah, so we're good on that. And then next item is public comment. Publicly communicating false statements about people that defame them could subject the speaker to both criminal and civil liability in the state of New Hampshire. In that vein, statements made at public input or at public hearings are not immune from potential consequences for their words. Furthermore, the fact that the public body does not prevent these statements from being made does not excuse or endorse those statements. It just means that the public body, in this case the school board, both recognizes and respects the right to free speech enshrined in the First Amendment of our Constitution. Um, members of the public, please state your name, address, and limit your comment to five minutes. Matt, it's going to be short, I promise. Okay. Uh, Tom for Davis, 39 on Milton Road. Um, 
I'm just up here because Sarah, you are truly amazing. Um, I met Sarah last year, and our first conversation really wasn't the greatest. I was screaming on the phone. Um, and uh, I sent her the emails that I received from my son's teachers, and she totally apologized. She got everything um, going, and you were a godsend. Thank you for the help last year. Mr. Roy, stop taking the good help and bringing him to the high school, because I'm so sad she's no longer at the middle school. She's not at the high school either. Oh, she doesn't know. <laughs> You're not at the high school? I thought you were going to the high school. Well, okay, but I'll so. take her. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again for the tremendous help last year. Um, I'm a big advocate for my child and um, other children, and I still continue to do that. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to address the committee? There being none, I'll close public mm -hmm. comment. Is there anything under other for special services? There being none, is there motion? To motion? Second. 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 All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye.